Welcome. We are here to talk about learning in Florida's environment, which is the LIFE program. And I'm Dr. Catherine, and I'm here at UF IFAS Extension, Sarasota County, with Agent Randy, our waste reduction agent. He's going to talk to us today about food waste and utilizing it for compost and even renewable energy. Welcome to our Compost Learning Center. We're here to talk about food waste today and really rethinking about not as food as a waste but a way to make renewable energy, to make fertilizers, to benefit our agricultural products. So at our office here you can see we have a number of different compost bins set up and we collect our food waste uh, fruits, vegetables, which are high in nitrogen, and we put those into our compost bins here. So if, I'll take you through the process a little bit here. We have a few leftover items that were in our refrigerator here, and these are a couple apples. We have oranges. These are great for composting, and they make up one of the four main components to help a successful compost bin uh, turn, it, turn into a nice fertilizer. So the first thing you do is you put in your your uh, food waste there, again, it's high in nitrogen. Uh, balanced with that is our second ingredient, and we love to use mulch here. It's high in carbon. So you want to balance carbon and nitrogen when putting a compost bin together. Um, typically, that's in a ratio of a 30 carbon to one nitrogen. Um, in volume, think of it as three to one. So we're going to add a little bit of this on top of there and kind of hide our food waste in there. So those are our two made items that we want to put in there. Another one I love to put in that we have the office is coffee grounds. Coffee grounds are high in nitrogen. Now they are, they're not, they're considered a green, but they're brown in color, which is kind of fun. The third thing we want to add into our bin is water. So we're going to add a bunch of water to keep the, the compost nice and damp so that we're able to make the process happen. Um, at, over the course of the next month, we're going to be, be fluffing and turning the compost, adding air into it. And what's going to happen is it's going to slowly heat up using our, our, our thermometer here. It's going to go from a temperature of 80 degrees up to 90, over 100 degrees, maybe up to 110 or 20 degrees. And when it finally breaks down, it's going to turn into this beautiful compost here that we like to think of as black gold. And this is high in nitrogen. It's great for your, for your plants and your vegetable garden. It diverts from the landfill. And it's a great way to think of food not as waste, but more of, of a recycled material. We also use worms here at our center in what's called vermicomposting. So if you want to follow me over here, we can look at our worms and how they break down the food waste. So as you can see, I have several bins set up here, and what we do is we're, we use a worm called red wiggler, and we put them in our, in, in a, into our bins here, and what worms do is they eat the food waste, and what they excrete or poop out is called castings. And that castings is high in nitrogen, and it's a great way uh, for, for uh, people who grow plants and, and do uh, gardening to really boost their, their, uh, their plants and not use chemicals and fertilizers and stuff like that. If you can kind of zoom in, I'll see if I can kind of find some here. There's a one, there's one of them there. I don't know if you can see that too good. It's flopping around. But what they do is they make, they turn and they take our food. This was all food waste at one time. And what they break down and eat turns into this really nice material, high in nitrogen. And it's great, great for them to use here. You can see how dark and rich that material is. So what we do is the same process that we had earlier. We'll take some leftover fruits or vegetables and we'll just kind of sprinkle those around in our bin. And this is going to be our nitrogen. The food is always higher in nitrogen. With vermiculture though, we don't want to really add any of that carbon material in there. We just kind of mix this into their base here. And what will happen is that those worms will slowly eat that food and they'll turn it into this beautiful compost material really rich in, the, in, in uh, nitrogen. Uh, we have a third way that we think about diverting food waste uh, here at, as well. and it's using a biogas digester. Really cool way to break down food and turn it into a renewable gas material. So if you want to follow me over here, we can go check this out too. So 
So what we have here is kind of an unusual looking contraption here, but what it is, is think of it almost like our human body. What we have on the one side over here is an area to feed this unit. So we take food waste. In this case, I'll take some peas that were left over from dinner the other day, and I'll dump those down into our machine here. All right, we'll put that in there, and I'll make sure all that gets in there and into that unit there, all right? And what happens is, is that food waste then goes down into the stomach, into the bladder, which is this black bag under here. You can't really see it too well, but it, it, we mix that with water down in there. And what it does is it creates this slurry that's high in nitrogen because we have food waste in there. And then it mixes with that water that breaks it down. Over time, bacteria comes in here and starts to munch away and eat on that food waste. What happens is that bacteria does two things. Number one, it, it, it produces a biogas. And that biogas is in the form of carbon dioxide and methane. And we've all learned about the impacts that those kind of greenhouse gases can have on our environment when they get out into the atmosphere. So what we do is we take the gas and we capture it in our, our bio bag here. And what happens, that bag slowly fills up and then we have a bunch of methane and carbon dioxide uh, biogas that we can use to power our grills here when we have cookouts or some sort of uh, uh, generator if we had a larger scale thing. On the nitrogen side, because we're talking about nitrogen a lot, is we have this little unit here that comes off which is an overflow. The overflow is the nitrogen rich slurry that's down here below and that creates an amazing um, fertilizer that can be used on all our plants and vegetables around here at the extension service. So there's three ways we want you to really take out of this is of thinking about food waste. Number one, it can be used in composting or vermicomposting. Number two, it can be converted to, into a biogas that is a reusable energy, renewable energy source. And three, let's not think about food as waste anymore, but rather a recyclable material. So thank you, Agent Randy, for talking to us today about food waste and utilizing it for compost and renewable energy. And we just want to review the nitrogen cycle for you. Remember that 78% of our atmosphere is nitrogen. It's two molecules of nitrogen covalently bonded together. But that form of nitrogen is not utilizable by plants and human beings. So bacteria take that nitrogen, they break it apart, and they form ammonia, which is a usable form to plants and animals. And us animals, us human beings, we need nitrogen for ATP, which is the energy of our cells, and we need nitrogen for our DNA. And so when we eat plants, we get nitrogen from the amino acids and proteins in those plants, and we can build our own ATP and DNA. And then of course, when living organisms die, those bacteria decompose us and release the nitrogen either to be used by plants again or release it back out into the atmosphere as that covalently bonded nitrogen. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed being with us today at UF IFAS Extension Sarasota County for Learning in Florida's Environment, the LIFE program. See you next time.